I made a video a couple of days ago about riding double disc wheels, which is what I'm riding now. I'm heading back to the studio to um, take this front one off because I need some of the parts for a future video. But the first thing I wanted to address in today's episode is that I was wrong. This wheel is 100% UCI legal. All disc wheels are, apparently. These are only banned in CTT events, which is cycling time trials. We have an organization in the UK called CTT that govern all of the time trials in the UK. And uh, you're not allowed to ride disc wheels in their TTs or disc wheel covers like this. But the UCI, despite what I said last episode, allow them. Evidently, not many people know about this rule because nobody pointed it out in the comments that I was wrong. But I did get a message from some aero experts. Xavier from AeroCoach sent me a message saying, double disc vid, you know they're fully UCI legal. They're actually fine to ride. Better the faster you go as the effective yaw angle decreases. CTT state that you have to have 45% of the wheel still exposed or open as they put it. The UCI have no wheel regulations for timed road events. They have an approved wheel list, but that's for mass start road events and cyclocross, etc. There are no tri spokes, track five spokes, disc wheels, etc. on there, which is something people continually get wrong. If that's not enough proof for you, here's uh, some pictures of Shara Gillow actually using double disc wheels at the 2012 London Olympic TT. She didn't win, but it looks pretty cool and she didn't crash. Maybe I'll have to put this back on after taking it off and test it again at higher speeds. Maybe even in an event, if we can find an event where it's actually legal, um, just to see how much more stable it is at high speed. If what Xavier is saying is true and the yaw angle reduces at high speed, then maybe they're rideable and you'll start seeing more people use them in UCI events. A little birdie tells me that a few World Tour teams might have some disc wheels, some front ones, but I can't tell you who. Another person who messaged me was Alex Dowsett, who, uh, aside from pushing Lawrence Carpenter off his bike, oh, oh God. is also quite well known for doing well in bike races and is an aero expert or nerd. Which word would you use? Here's his take on the front disc wheel. Hello, welcome to Francis's channel. Now, I've been here before. I've been here. I've more famously known on this channel for pushing over Lawrence. <laughs> Think of a disc wheel like a sail. Now, a little bit of yaw. Now, yaw really confuses people that don't speak English as their mother tongue because you've got yaw as in it's yours. You've got you are yaw. And now we've got yaw as in your angle. Uh, zero yaw angle almost doesn't exist. It's when it's arrow straight. Normally on a velodrome banking, you're looking at one or two degrees of yaw. Out on the road, you can experience every, anything up to, well, anything really, depending on the strength. Now, a front disc, the big problem with them is handling, as Francis said, but there is speed to be gained. And it's it's very tough to put a, this is X percent or X watts or X time faster, because it really does depend on the conditions. There is going to be a gain, the more yaw you swing around to, but there's going to be a stall angle. Stall angle is where everything just, goes to this is where everything goes wrong stall angle with the front disc that's the point that you fall off if it's too strong or too much from the side that's the point where you're seeing no aerodynamic gain and a significant loss in time through being stopped and on the floor but up until that point what you effectively have is an extra sail on your bike and so you can develop thrust but it's doable and i think at some point someone's going to have the cojones to actually try it again i think the trade-off to it as we saw from france's video is number one stability like are you actually just simply riding further trying to handle the bike and tt bike you're on tri bars like francis was it's a bit of a cop out really riding it on his road bike i've found if something is difficult to handle on my bike then my position fails my shoulders come out my body comes up because i'm trying to wrestle the bike and then any benefits that you might get from the front disc are outweighed by the just general panic because panic and being closer to certain death is never conducive to fast time trialing. In conclusion, it's probably another 30 seconds over 25 miles. Lots of you may have seen that he's actually taken a step back and retiring from professional road cycling, which means, well, I hope he's gonna be uploading on his YouTube channel a lot more. So if you would like to uh, follow him or subscribe to him, he, he produces very good videos all about cycling, then do. It'll be in the description down below. Part two 
of today's video. Inside of here, there are some sunglasses. Question that I'm asked most on this channel is what sunglasses are you wearing? Consider this section of the video sponsored by Sun God. Sun God have been a supporter of this channel for the last two years and I actually went to visit them. A lot of you will have seen those videos where we went mountain biking in Verbia and it was very, very lovely. We are continuing our partnership and I wanted to take this quick opportunity to explain what they make, what they do and a rundown of some of their products. These are the errors. So the big thing with Sun God is that every single pair is custom. If you go on the website, there are a few set options to start with, but then if you hit customize, you can change the colors of pretty much everything, change the lens, change the little icons on the side, change the ear socks, and you can make a completely personal pair of glasses. I tend to go with the Eras, which is my favorite model. There's four different models in the Pace series, which are the ones for sports. The Eras have no piece on the top, so when you've got your head down and you're doing an effort, you can still look forwards and you've got full range of vision. You can then choose whether you have a small nose piece or the full jaw. Loads of different color options, but the lens that I like at the moment is the Iris HV Blue. HV, high visibility. Those are the ones I was wearing this morning when I was riding in, uh, but they're the Iris version, so they change brightness based on the conditions. So if it's really sunny, they go a bit darker. If you're indoors, they go lighter. They do that in a smoky one as well, if you don't want the sort of leery yellow look. But you know, they're cycling glasses, so they should be leery. Delivery is mega fast in the UK. They've always delivered mine next day after hitting submit. Two or three days if you're in mainland Europe and three to four days worldwide. If you can't choose between having a normal nose piece or the bottom jaw, then you can um, add them on as extras when you buy one pair of glasses, which is nice. They have lenses made out of fancy stuff. These are called 8KO. 8K optics, which are made out of two millimeter thick nylon, triple layer scratch resistant with 100% UV and impact protection. And to finish, Sun God have now officially reached B Corp status, which means they look after their staff. They do good stuff for sustainability and charitable causes. So if you're in the market for sunglasses, please consider Sun God. They've been supporting my channel and my work for a long time now, and they're lovely people. They also look cool. Doing a little thing for a future episode right now. I won't reveal too much, but I'm letting my watch decide my workout. I'm seeing if I can follow today's plan, which is base 155 watts average, steady the whole way. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can execute this on my route home. Might be quite tricky. Because my route home is very wiggly, lots of barriers, and very uphill. My watch is beeping at me already. It's probably not gonna be a very good training session, this. 